Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have that same equation again, x of t, x as a function of t, is equal to a times the cosine of omega t, a being the amplitude of oscillation, omega being the angular frequency of the motion. And we're trying to find velocity as a function of time and acceleration as a function of time. In the previous video we used calculus, we used differentiation to find velocity and time because velocity is a derivative of position and acceleration is a derivative of, of velocity. But here we're going to use an algebraic technique to figure out what to do. Starting with the energy equation, we can say that energy initial equals energy final, or we can say that one half times Ka squared, again that's the condition where we take the object and we'll pull us, push it as far away as possible away from the equilibrium point where x equals a, that all the energy is stored in the spring equal to one half Ka squared, then we'll let go and then from then on the energy remaining will be, uh, well it still be the equal amount to the initial energy we have but then it will be divided in both kinetic and potential energy and so that would be one half Kx squared where x would be less than a plus one half mv squared. First of all we can get rid of the one halves and then if we solve this equation for v we can then show that v is equal to plus or minus the square root of k divided by m times a squared minus x squared. If you don't if you don't remember how to do that we show you how to do that in a few videos ago in the series. So algebraically we move the kx squared to the other side we divide both sides by m, take the square root, and end up with this equation right here. But then we remember that omega is equal to the square root of k divided by m, and we can say that x is equal to a times the cosine of omega t. So let's replace k divided by m with omega and a squared minus x squared. Let's replace x by what x is equal to. Of course, remember that if omega is equal to this, that means that omega squared is equal to k divided by m. And since we have k divided by m here, we can write omega squared. Or we can separate this. This can be written as plus or minus the square root of k over m times the square root of the quantity a squared minus x squared. Then you can see that this could simply be written as omega. So v as a function of time is equal to plus or minus the square root of k over m, that's equal to omega, times a squared minus x squared. Well, this can now be written as the square root of a squared minus x can be written as a times the cosine of omega t, which is a squared times the cosine squared of omega times t. Right away, you can see that you can factor out an a squared, so this can now be written as v of t is equal to plus or minus omega, times the square root of a squared and what we have left here is 1 minus the cosine squared of omega times t. Now a squared, take the square root of that, we can, we can move that outside the radical and 1 minus the cosine squared of omega t can be written as the sine squared of omega t. So we have v as a function of time is equal to plus or minus omega times a times the square root of the sine square of omega t and then the square root of that is simply the sine of omega t so we can say that v as a function of time is equal to plus or minus omega times a times the sine of omega times t. Now compare that to the result we got in the previous video. Well in the previous video we ended up v of t is equal to minus omega a times the sine of omega t. Where does the plus or minus come from? Well it turns out that with simple harmonic motion, as the object is moving back and forth and back and forth, the velocity can indeed be positive and can indeed be negative. The reason why I have plus or minus is because we didn't know what the initial condition was, and so therefore we're not sure if we need to use a positive or a negative. The sine of omega t can be both positive and negative, so therefore we need to have a positive and negative there. The next thing we want to do is find the acceleration as a function of time. For that, what we need to do is go back to Newton's second law. We know that F is equal to ma, and we know that Hooke's law says that F, the force of the spring on the object, is equal to minus kx, and since we can set these two equations equal to each other, we can write m times a is equal to minus k times x. In other words, a is equal to minus k over m 
times x. If we now again make the substitution, k divided by m can now be written as omega squared, and x can be written as a times the cosine of omega t, which means that a as a function of time can now be written as minus omega, and that would be omega squared times x, which is a times the cosine of omega t. And you can see then by making those very same two substitutions as we did over here and some algebraic work, we now have an equation for the acceleration as a function of time, and we now have an equation for the velocity as a function of time. So that's pretty good. And now, by using these algebraic techniques, we got the very same results as we did in the previous video where we used the differentiation of the original function. And that's how it's done.